Perspectives with Awesome as Silva, and this week we're going to be talking about the fact that Worcester is a, as I think many of you know, Worcester is a refugee city, and that just means that Worcester has refugee and immigrant are, are two separate terms. I, I think yes. we're going to find out from our from our guests. Refugees oftentimes are fleeing political persecution, are truly coming here because their lives are in danger. So we're going to be getting into some issues that have to do with refugees, with immigration, and the ways in which we need to uh, educate all of those who are in our community. And I'll right. turn it over to you with, with those words. a pretty big topic today. It's a pretty big topic. Uh, we have Mukesh Bar uh, Baral from Arise, and we also have a former student of NCC. Um, with us to share their experience. And before I begin the topic and ask questions, I wanted to just read, uh, to start off this topic, uh, from the website of Department of Justice and Department of Education. It says the English learner, EL students, constitute 9% of all public school students and are enrolled in nearly three out of four, every four public schools. Under the Title VI of C Civil Rights Act of 1964, and Title VI uh, and the Equal Education Opportunities Act of 1974, the public schools must, must ensure that all EL students can participate meaningfully and equally in educational programs. Now, that's where I think the issue arises, is the meaningfully and equally in all educational programs. And could you please now enlighten us on this topic? That's right. I think um, uh, the paragraph that you just read is uh, extremely important. Because uh, the understanding of Justice Department and Educational Department is every student have the right for their meaningful and equal education. What we have seen in Worcester with three different schools, uh, NCC New Citizen Center Elementary, NCC New Citizen Center stands for New Citizen Center, middle, or they call it secondary, but it is age-wise and middle, and NCCYA, which stands for young adult. So we have three programs. And after talking to uh, refugees and immigrants who underwent uh, through these programs, and, and some parents, ARISE, uh, which stands for Advocacy for Refugee and Immigrant Service for, Services for Empowerment, uh, have championed this cause that this is not equal education based on the fact that these three schools are providing a separate program uh, compared to the regular school, home school, whatever you want to call it, um, in the name of English education. I know this is an English language learners program, but uh, we believe that this is not equal and this is not meaningful. So what do students do? Are they transported to a different location, or are they just put into a different class? And how are they identified that they need to be put in this program? That's a very interesting question. As far as we are informed, and this is refugee, refugees and immigrants informing us, these kids, after they get resettled in the United States, they are taken to Parents Resource Center. Parents Resource Center takes a test of I don't know, academic, English level. We have, we're not sure what type of test is administered. After taking the test, they are placed in these school systems. And we have heard that if their English level is higher than 3.0 in access test, or if they can produce, identificate, uh, produce acceptable documents from their home country, which, um, is more of like you're asking documents from uh, refugees uh, who are fleeing, like you correctly pointed out, persecution. Like, uh, and and it's if you really produce documents, there's a chance that that is not as equal as the American education system is, even though uh, those documents uh, might be like rejected as not being equal, and you are, end up going to NCC school system, which we say is parallel to uh, the home school, um, Worcester public school system. But is not equal to the education that you would get in the Worcester public school system. Do you think that this is being done with the best of intentions, though, 
on the Worcester public school system, or do you think that they are intentionally trying to put students in a, in a, in a separate tract and intentionally not trying to give them the education that other students are receiving? Mm -hmm. So we cannot really say what the intention was. I, I, um, I give the benefit of doubt to uh, Worcester public school system. But the way these are set, like Asma just uh, pointed out, three different locations, they are not inside the Worcester public school system. They are segregated, and that's why we call it segregation. It's not just segregation. This is unnecessary segregation. If you are trying to teach students English, and this is how I learned English, I'll be very frank, if you are trying to teach students English, you have to put them in an environment where they can interact with other kids who actually speak English. Yes. And if you are putting uh, these kids right. in a scenario where they can find another person uh, who can speak their language, they will switch back to their regular language. And you can say that you are teaching English, but the question is for how many uh, days, for how many months, for how many years? We have found students, the students um, at NCC, now um, at NCC YA, who have spent more than two years. So I can ask, or anybody can ask, what type of English was taught for two and a half years, and still this kid was not able to go to a regular school as promised by the Worcester Public School System. So why was the promise made? I mean, probably uh, Ms. Mupuri can highlight on that, but like the promise that was made that, okay, you learn English over here, uh, after certain time, you'd be transferred to your regular school. When is the transfer gonna happen? Nobody knows. Yeah, see, this is why I go back to, yeah. uh, I'm guessing that it was with the best of intentions. So there has been this whole conversation in America about should it be English immersion, which is what it, it used to be. You, you arrive from whatever country you are, you can sit in the back of the classroom, English is being spoken all around you, sink or swim. Eventually, you're, we're hoping that, that you're going you're gonna to catch up and, and you're going to be able to learn English, and that's the immigrant experience of a lot of people in America would go home, their mom and dad were speaking Polish or Italian or whatever it was, but in school, you're sitting there and eventually you sort of ab absorb this. So my guess would be that it has been decided that somehow this is the better way to do it, that we you know, have decided that we're going to give you this individual instruction. You're saying that, it, that it's not working. So you've, you've lived it. Uh, would it have been better for you simply to have been put into a classroom where even though you might not have known English at, at first, that everybody around you was simply speaking English? No, not everybody. Everyone comes from Africa, so everyone has his like country language. So when we meet together, sometimes you meet someone who knows your language. So you can speak the language which you know from your country, so you don't have to learn the new language like English. So when we were there, they could teach us English. Like English, basic English, but not like regular English the way you teach in the school. So we, can, we could be there for a long and no improving. When we was there, I could, when we went to NCC, I was told I was going to register, then they give me a test. They told me that well, if you pass the test, maybe you're going to go to high school, or we're going to figure out, because I was me and my young brothers and sisters. They give us the test. They told me that I passed the test. But because I was already 18, they told me that they're going to call me back to see if the high school, the regular school, gonna accept me according to my age. I wait, but my two young brothers, they were directly go to NCC. I wait for like two weeks, and I was took to NCC. When I reached there, in my level, what I learned to my country, according to what they are giving us, it was not the same. I saw that it was the lower level. And what they told us, they told us, when you will, be, you, you will improve in your English, you can be taken to a good school, like a regular school. And it can, it's, a, it's according the way you work in class. You can, it can take three months, 
two months to five months. So you can go to the another school. Like me, I was hoping to get high school diploma, to go to college. So when I went there, I see things they were not the same as they told me. So we were there learning because we didn't know what is going on. We are going to school like we knew. They are helping us to know better English so that we can go to another school. But it takes long than way. Then they come, they told us that they're going to separate us. The young adult and the kid, they're going to separate us. Then they took us to young adult NCC. So how old were you when you came to America? I was 18. 18. Okay. So, okay, so, so you had some English when you, when you came and then you took, and then you took the test. Wow. Yes. So I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. When you talked about there was three programs, like elementary, middle, and high, high school. Uh, why does elementary kids need English language? Because that's their age to learn language. Like it just confuses me. I, I'm not understanding why such young age kids would be taken out of regular class to interact with kids uh, because I would assume that's the perfect age to like really just throw them in the... In, in a, I guess the, you know, the thing that, that I find funny about this is that this argument, this became where it was, it, this be, became a left-right argument in America. And so those on the right that were about English immersion and somehow this was seen as being this conservative position that was such a, a terrible position and that you should have a more liberal view and that we should be able to get, I think there's something like 56 languages that are spoken in the Worcester school systems. You should be able to get somebody who is going to be dedicated and be able to speak that language, help that person, help them take those, those tests, and then eventually that there would be a well, way to I transition. I mean, this might I mean, be a radical, this might be a radical right. idea, though that why not, at least at these schools, just offer a class that each of these children go to during the day, rather than take them out of the environment and give them a whole different school system and segregate them? Well, I, I think that we, that makes, I so think you, a certain you age, raise yeah, a very right into the mainstream. Now. I started learning English when I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. My academics, when I was younger than 10, was all in my one mother tongue when I was, uh, in uh, my birth country. So had I come to United States at that point, and had I been resettled in Worcester, I would have gone to NCCYA. And probably I wouldn't be sitting over here talking to you about refugee and immigrant rights, if that's the scenario. Because you're not providing the environment that is required for growth. These eight years old, I actually haven't met this kid, but like I, I have been reported by uh, these um, uh, refugee leaders in the community. And you correctly pointed out, these kids are like sponge. They are going to catch whatever they are. I have seen 13 years old resettled in the United States with really good um, you know, uh, mother tongue. They only speak English now. And we have this eight-year-old going to NCC elementary. I don't understand the reason behind, honestly. Right. I mean, like, why can't you just put this eight-year-old? And this is why I call it from eight to age 22. There's a separate, like from age eight, and they call it SLIFE, Students with Limited or Interrupted Formal Education. A, that's, that's the acronym. Students with Limited or uh, Interrupted Formal Education. How's the eight-year-old who just turned eight-year-old is a SLIFE student. He just right. missed two years in school. Right. And he's in second grade according to his paper um, that was sent uh, to us. Like how? How could you say that this kid is life? Well, but, so are there two issues here then? So the one issue is the language barrier. Mm -hmm. And I think we're talking about, you know, would it be better, especially in an elementary school, to put them, put them in with, with their classmates and their classmates are, are learning English, they would probably adapt very, very quickly. It's the other issue that you are coming here at 8, 9, and 10, and instead of being in the second, third, fourth grade, whatever it would be, your chronological age would, would kind of match up with the grade, but you haven't had that formal education, so really you should be in the, in the first grade. And, uh -huh. and, and is that part of what but the school how, does to try and, and, but and this catch kid you had up? A, but this kid had a formal education, like right. so many other refugee kids. Yeah. Mupuri was going to a refugee school and a refugee camp. Prior to that, she was going to uh, her uh, home school um, in Africa. 
um, Democratic Re Republic of Congo, right? Yes. Just because we don't have the measuring rod to figure out the acad academics of these kids, we simply say that. Wow, well, um, and this is really in your in your wheelhouse. But I mean, yeah. you know, here in Massachusetts, of course, I mean, you know, with MCAS and everything else. Listen, I mean, if we're going to have somebody. Uh, or a group of people, I don't know how many people we're, we're, we're talking about in, in all of these schools, who are suddenly going to come in and start taking MCAS tests. And because the they have, right, and those scores start to go down, then school funding, uh, schools that would be in, in, in trouble with the state, teachers who would be fearful of losing their job, it has nothing to do with, with a person's intelligence. It has to do with if I have you in the Worcester school system or any school system, from kindergarten through senior you're going to have no trouble passing MCAS. I'm going to say that no matter what your education is coming from another country, we weren't teaching you, you know, the American history or, the, or, or what that test is going to be testing you on. And I do wonder then if that's, if that's part of it. You know, you don't I want somebody to I think that may be part of down. it, but there are solutions to that, right? I mean, exactly. are there, I guess the question is, is there a conversation on maybe taking these kids and not necessarily s segregating them but just like you do with special ed kids, giving them, you know, a, a kind of a, a flag so that they don't necessarily affect the test results. But over time, throughout the school, you can see how they progressed mm -hmm. and improved. Um, that would seem more of an appropriate way to handle this than to just And all separate. other school districts are handling the same way, except Worcester. If you just go outside, Shrewsbury, if you just go watch your sets, everybody is doing the same way. They invite the kid in their one uh, classroom, they have a separate class whenever, like, as the Justice Department and Department of Education requires, if a segregation is required, segregation for how many hours, if that is required, they would be in a different setup. They would learn English, and they would be immersed back into the regular classroom. That's how these things are going yeah, on. But, but Holden isn't a refugee city. I mean, you know, Holden may have, or the Wachusett school system may certainly have some young people and, and some students, but they wouldn't have the numbers or the variety of languages that have been spoken in Worcester. So I wonder if that's just more of a, yeah, of a numbers game. I mean, I can see that. There'll probably be only a handful of students per school, if at all. And yeah. Shrewsbury uh, and Holden just are, are richer communities. Um, I, I believe Boston. Boston yeah. has a lot of refugees. I believe Springfield has a lot of refugees. I oh, and they, they do it differently as well? I don't. I don't think so. There's no other school as parallel as Worcester has laid out uh, with elementary, um, middle. D that's or what I mean. So Worcester is unique. Well, Boston and Springfield totally don't do it the same yeah. way that Worcester. Totally does. unique. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, the friend of my brother who they just changed the seats because of take the children in the regular school. He was here in NCC. He was for like three years, but when they changed the seats, he went to regular school. So it's why my brother also is keeping complaining, how come? So you feel that you've been shortchanged on being able to go to college because of this system? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and had you been, if you, so if you had, had come, oh, I'm sorry, in the country that you came from? I'm coming from Congo, but I was in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So Congo and then through Uganda? Yeah. And then you uh, arrive in America, and if you had been a senior at, Doherty or, or wherever here in, in Worcester, you feel that you would have had the opportunity then to go on to, uh, on to college. Yes. So, so what, do, what do you get from the, for, from the parallel school? What, uh, do you get like a certificate or, or what? Which school? NCC? Yeah. Yeah, NCC from the YA. NCC. Yeah, we get, but in, in the beginning we didn't know how to interpret the marks on the paper which they give us, I know we call them record, uh, report to record. So I didn't know they were, we were doing exams. At the end, they could send us an email, some paper is like record or some marks. So I didn't know what is the meaning of that because no, in our country, when you pass the exam, they have to give you, we call it bulletin. So that show the way you work. So we didn't know how to interpret that one. So they could give us, and there is something which we could be blind, we couldn't see it, which is wonders. We have all records, all name of teacher, but the different name of the school. So about NCC, I think I have no record. No record? Yeah. So there's nothing, the so there's nothing you could transfer. You wanted to go to Worcester State, for example. Nothing. There's nothing you could transfer. 
I can trust, but it's not from NCC. I start to NCC, my, but my record come from right. another school. But there's no diploma. There is no diploma. NCCYA does not have a diploma track. But what she was trying to explain was, C in paper goes to, uh, not at NCC, but to South High. Mm. That's what her uh, progress report states. Even uh. though you never set foot in South High. Exactly. She doesn't know where South High is. She doesn't know who is the principal of South High. She has never met the principal of South High, but she goes to South High in papers. But she actually... But what credits does she get? So, for, for example, what we're, I guess what Hank is asking is, do you end up with a high school diploma? Even if they claimed she went to South High, does she get a high school diploma or a GED? What, what exactly is that paper? So once you complete NCCYA, we see dropped out um, from, and she's going to another trade school. What is the name of the school? Job Corps Grafton. Job Corps Grafton. Uh, she dropped out and went. She could have stayed there without the possibility of high school diploma. She could have stayed there. So you can probably explain that better. And she made that decision uh, discussing with her parents, uh, who, by the way, his, uh, her father is a college graduate. Like, we're talking about educated people here. Right. And he, of course, he is a college graduate, so he's going to look for a better future for his kids as well. And we're not just talking about a one Mupiri family. We're talking about 250 students impacted by this one. And uh, uh, I believe she could have stayed at NCCYA, uh, and could have gone uh, to a GED track in order to uh, take it, or go to a credit recovery program at Kramer Center. But mind. Yeah, but that, right, but, and, I, and I get it, because that's, that's not what you want. But it seems to me that the, so the part that I'm missing then, and I understand why at 18, and I understand that, that the action that, that, that you took and the frustration that you, that you feel. I mean, I haven't lived it, obviously, but I have a lot of empathy. I, I understand that part of it. It seems, though, that especially if you're, let's go back to that eight-year-old. So that eight-year-old, after a year, should then go to Worcester Public Schools. Is that the part that isn't happening? You get into this system and you never go to Worcester Public Schools? I think there's no clear data on who is going to. My understanding is if you are in NCC Elementary, at some point you probably would go to a regular in the home school, uh, but uh, we have found students at NCC uh, who were promised high school with, with uh, the improvement of their English, which is administered by access and tested, and, and uh, you know, tested in four different areas, speak, spoken, writing, listening, and reading. And after you have some sense of, like, classroom interaction or social interaction or, or understanding of the classroom, then they should have been transferred to a regular school. Yeah. Um, I don't know exact numbers or data on that, but I have found students who have come to uh, arise and asked for uh, support, and they have been, like uh, Mupuri was saying, for one year, two years, and even more, uh, at NCC and now being transferred to NCCYA. And they, they were not even 18. They were 14, 15, 16, and they 17. Never, right, and they never, get, they never get out. They never get out of that system, out of that parallel. Uh, I, right, but I don't could, have could to you clarify, though? You said they were promised. What does that mean? I mean, it's one thing to say, well, in this, in this program, approximately two years worth of someone you know, becoming proficient in English to be able to move on. That I would consider as a promise. But do they have an exam? Do they have some sort of standard marking that will say, if you have achieved this, do you then get to move on? Or is it based on you know, a teacher or someone's assumption about if, you, if you're ready or not? We don't know exactly how they make that determination because if access test, which is um, English test for comprehension and uh, communi uh, communication, um, if access is the, is the measuring rod, then what's the point? Like 2.0, 3.0, like what's the point that, at what point they would be able to go to a regular school? Yeah. 
But I guess we are overall, like I know there is a bigger population uh, of uh, immigrant uh, and refugee in Worcester at this point, but we might come up with uh, not refugee and immigrants, but like regular citizen kids who speak different languages. If they were trying to enroll their kids who don't really speak English, how would we, how would we deal with that? Would we create another school system? Well, that's a very good question you ask because that, that was my personal experience. Yeah. I mean, I raised my kids, my older kids at home speaking, you know, uh, Indian, uh, Urdu at home. And they actually knew very little English before they went to school. And they learned very quickly because they were kids. They were sure. kindergarten. They learned very quickly to the point where they don't speak anything but English now. And if you speak to them in, in, my, in the language, they probably won't understand a word now. It's actually reversed. So it's a very good question if you have citizens of America that yeah. may be teaching because of their grandparents or some relative another language that's their primary language at home when they're younger. Does that exclude them when they go well, into and, and we, I mean, we see so many people now who are coming here from Puerto Rico because of the, because of the, the hurricane. So certainly U.S. citizens, but their primary language may be Spanish. They may not speak right. uh, English, so I'm guessing that they are simply sitting in that, that classroom. I mean, I don't think right. that there would be some sort of a special classroom. You know, I, this to me cries out for a pilot program. Like, I'm gonna, like I know what I'm talking about or I'm going to solve this right now after listening for a half hour. But it seems like there would be a pilot program at least where I would be able to take a certain amount of students, do exactly what you're saying, let's mainstream them, and right. then let's compare. And, and find out what right. uh, you know what what it is that, that the part that that's really hanging me up is that this is something that seems designed so that after a month or a couple of months you have gotten somebody now who will transition back to South High or wherever it is and yet you're talking about a year two years no end in sight for somebody who is sort of in this limbo age of 14 to 18 years old or 18 to 22 and that just I, it doesn't, I mean, that we doesn't seem to be what we would want it to be. Topic, yeah, though. We of, haven't even rise, touched on yeah. the topic of, we're just talking academics Thanks, right yeah. now, but we haven't even touched on the topic of social interaction, friendships, you know, having this child then jump into maybe high school um, and being in an environment that everyone is natively speaking English and they're coming from a school that yeah, now was how all isolated. English as second, lear as second yeah, language. Yeah, sure. How isolated How you, isolated you are, you what would be. It would have, have. A personality and, and uh, you know, overall uh, progress uh, of, their, of their, I guess, yeah. behavior. Like, yeah. how, how would they? We are out of time. Yep. So I'm going to say this. Let's do another show. Let's do another show. Where we show. actually we get to what you wanted to yes. talk about. Yes. So thank you so much again for watching this week. But this was another perspectives on what is going on with Worcester and around the country, especially Massachusetts, with refugee and immigrant children. Uh, a great conversation to have and a lot of, uh, of thought-provoking uh, ideas and concerns that we're, we found out today. And we'll continue this conversation again next week. Thank you so much.